this time on Bat Squad. If everyone got to see a bat up close, I really think the public opinion would change about bats. There are a lot of things that kids can do to help bats. You can spread the word by talking to your family and your neighbors. You just know you're not going to be home. Hey Bat Friends, I'm Cammy, and I'm your Bat Squad host. Bats are so awesome. I mean, they can be really big to really small and cute and tiny, like the cuteness overload. I mean, imagine a tiny bat sitting on your finger. Ah, cuteness overload! <sighs> Just like puppies. Anyway, they can be found all over the world. Did I mention they're super cool? Bat Squad member Madison has seen a ton of bats and she's gonna tell us all about them. Take it away, Madison. Hi, I'm Madison Myas. I'm 14 years old and I'm from Troy, Michigan. Well, my favorite bat is the bumblebee bat, which I think are really cool because they're the smallest bat species in the world. They weigh um, only up to a dime, and they also live in only one area in the world. A couple years ago, I went to Costa Rica, and I got to see some of the really awesome and interesting bats there, like the Honduras tent-making bats and a lot of the cool fruit-eating bats. Well, the Honduras tent baby bats, what they do is they find a huge leaf to go under, they bite the stem of the leaf so that it folds over like a little tent, and then they live underneath that. Thanks, Madison. I didn't know that bats could be so awesome. Well, of course I already did, but this just makes them awesomer. And they're so small, and I didn't even know that they can make their own tents. I mean, tents! Bats are found all over the world, and we're always learning new things about them. And Madison loves to share what she's learned about bats. So Madison, how do you tell other kids about what you've learned about bats? Well, I've traveled around a lot with my dad to schools, museums, and libraries, and helped tell kids and adults about bats and do programs. We also do an annual bat festival, which I've been volunteering for the last four years to do different crafts with kids about bats and programs, and it's really fun. When kids see bats up close for the first time, they realize that bats aren't these scary creatures like they see in movies. They're actually really cute and very friendly. When I first start talking about bats to kids and adults, sometimes they get nervous and a little anxious about it. Some adults will actually get up and leave because they heard so many myths about bats and they're actually scared of them. But once I start getting into a talk, they start getting excited about bats and ready to learn. I think that kids should know that bats are very beneficial and that they should not be afraid of bats and a lot of the bat myths out there are completely not true. And they should also know that bats do a lot of great things for us and that we should protect them. One of the myths about bats is that bats will actually make nests in your hair and get caught in your hair, but in reality bats don't make nests and they actually have very good eyesight and use echolocation and will not get caught in your hair. Another myth is that all bats have rabies, which is definitely not true, and actually there's not many bats that have rabies out there. Talking with other kids is really fun and exciting experience, especially when we bring out the live bats. Their faces just light up and get excited about bats, and when they hear that all these myths about bats aren't true and how important they are and how much they help our environment, they get excited about helping them. If everyone got to see a bat up close like these kids do, I really think the public opinion would change about bats because they'd see how they're not these scary creatures like in horror movies and cartoons. Halloween is a super fun time to tell your friends and family about bats. <laughs> you can even start a club at your school like Oscar who lives in California did. Oscar, can you tell us more? My name is Oscar Schollen. I am 13 years old. I live in Pacific Grove, California, and I go to Pacific Grove High School. The name of our school group is Team Chiroptera, and it was started by Mrs. Terry, 
who wanted to create a club that got kids into science and out exploring and conducting field research with the help of Dr. Dave Johnson. Team Chiroptera is really fun because not only do we get to learn many new things, but we also get to go out into the wild like real bat scientists and conduct research. Here, I know we're gonna have a lot of fun. I just can't wait. Team Chiroptera. <laughs> what Team Chiroptera does is every year or so, we formulate questions that we can then go out and test and later formulate our information, our data, into a poster that we can present at a symposium. Our research project was to test whether there were more bats in a small area of space or a large area of space. And this was greatly influenced by urbanization and just the general ecosystems that they were in. Presenting at the research symposium was really fun. We got to meet all these bat scientists who were way older than we were, and they were really interested in what we were doing, which is great. What's been really interesting for me, uh, teaching other friends of mine about bats, is just as I've become more open with bats, so have they. And then they're spreading the word to their friends and their parents, and it just continues on. It's just great to have a more aware world. Team Chiroptera is really fun because it, it gets kids in, get engaged in something that only older people might be doing. And so that means going out and doing field research or learning about new things. And it's, it's not like sitting in a, a stuffy classroom listening to some boring guy lecture on and on. It's, it's just about going out and enjoying the, the, the world and science. It's just amazing. If you're interested in starting a club of your own, similar to Team Chiroptera, all you need is a chaperone, a group of your peers, and you don't need a bat detector. You don't need a bat scientist. You don't need a mist net. Those will help, but you don't need them. All you need is a tenacity for learning. I really want to start my own bat squad club at my school. Thanks, Oscar. Now let's meet Rachel, who writes about bats every week. Tell us more about it, Rachel. I am Rachel, and I'm 14 now. I've liked bats as long as I can remember. <laughs> My blog is called The Batter Day News and comes out every Saturday. It's a weekly blog about bats. I first got into bats when I made a sixth grade project, and we found the organization in the newspaper, and I got to meet them, and they were just so tiny that <laughs> I it got inspired to do a blog for them, and writing about them was just so fun. <laughs> the bats here at St. Lucie, they are wild animals. Um, they're sick or injured that come here, and most of them can be released if we can nurse them back to health. When I came to St. Lucie for hours, I wanted to hold the bats and to take care of them, but I couldn't do that, but I liked writing, so I got into writing the blog, and after a few, I just really got into it. I like seeing the comments after I write the blog. There's this one person who really likes bats, but he's too young to be helping them, except for turning off the lights, but he just really likes my blog. <laughs> It's really fun to see what people think about it. And seeing it up on the website, that's really big, because all of my friends can see it. I do like talking to other kids. It, I'm a little bit nervous about talking to kids about bats, but once I get into it, I'm okay. At first, all of my friends thought they were big and they were scary things that were gonna come swooping down out of the air and get tangled in their hair and mess, mess with their dew. And no. <laughs> they, they were all talking about like vampire bats and how they're big and huge. I'm like, that's a fruit bat. The fruit bats are the big ones. The vampire bats are like that big. <laughs> You're scared of this. <laughs> There are a lot of things that kids can do to help bats. You can help by donating to a bat organization. You can make posters, put them up in your school. 
You can spread the word by talking to your family and your neighbors. You can dance, put on a little dance. You can draw and put your drawings out. There are just so many. <laughs> the main thing is just to care about bats. Aw, I think vampire bats are kind of cute. Did you know that there are 1,300 kinds of bats in the world? Yeesh! But aw, at the same time, that's the second largest group of mammals in the entire world. We know that there are tons of bats in the world, but we don't usually get to see them because they're only awake at night, just like owls, sadly. Calvin was lucky to see his favorite bat up close. I wish I could do that. But still, his favorite bat up close. Can you tell us more about it, Calvin? Hi, I'm Calvin, and I'm from Texas, and I'm 10 years old. My favorite bat is the Mexican Freetail. It was really cool um, looking at them up close. Um, the wings um, were longer than I expected. They're much like our arms, and if you had web between our arms, and you can glide really easily. And their, their feet um, was really weird. I never knew that um, they kind of have um, hairs on their fingers that look like eyelashes, but it's actually kind of like a built-in comb to groom themselves. Bats are different in many ways. Here in North America, we have really small ones. And in South America, they have the vampire bat. And in Australia, they have flying foxes. The wingspan is um, about to a man's head all the way to down to their waist almost. Here in America, um, the bats are um, insect eaters, so they eat a lot of insects. And in Asia and Australia, the flying foxes eat a lot of fruit. There are lots of bats inside neighborhoods um, that kids and adults really don't know about. And people make up all these myths that the bats um, are dangerous, they suck your blood and all that. But um, they're really all around you and it hadn't harmed anyone yet. So what kids should learn to help save bats is they should tell other kids and or you can tell adults and uh, just say um, we should put up bat houses and tell all the interesting things. You can read a book or look on the internet, um, but all of the myths that um, people tell about bats are not real. Making a bat house is a great idea. It gives bats a place to sleep and you might be able to see one in real life. And building one is so easy with help of an adult and plus you can make it pretty and majestic like a unicorn. <laughs> And once you're finished with your bat house, the best place to put it is on the side of a building, like your house, or on a pool. So Calvin, what other things should kids know about bats? What I tell people about bats is they eat insects and they help farmers save money. And then we can have more crops. And um, houses are taking up the habitat of bats. They're chopping down trees and in um, building houses, and so the bats have no choice but to roost up in shingles of houses and all that, but they really aren't a problem. Kids should tell parents um, to protect some bat habitat places. Caves are one, and trees, under trees, and shingles in the house or on the rain gutters. Bats can hide in there, and if you can protect those places, I think that we would have um, more of a chance to have more bats. I think kids should know, um, don't be afraid of bats. Also, do not worry about bats. Um, they live all around you, so you just can't see them. But they're really afraid of you, so just know you're, you're not going to be home. I love all the different ways that Bat Squad members are helping bats. Now it's your turn. What ideas do you have that could turn into a Bat Squad project? Turns out it's pretty easy to protect animals and the environment. If you need ideas, check out the activity, The Bat Squad! Thanks for watching. Remember, kids like you can help bats too. Anyone can be a bat hero.
Thanks.